Hi again, Mark here from Talking Bass. So I get asked quite regularly over at the Talking Bass Live Hangs about tone. The questions are quite varied in nature, so people might complain about getting a slap tone, or they might find it hard to hear themselves on stage, or the bass might be farting out as they increase volume, but most of the time they all boil down to one general question about how to set the tone controls on a bass or an amp. Well, today I'm going to give you one simple answer that can act as a foundation for everything else going forward, and it's something that I wish I'd learned much, much earlier than I did. So, how should you go about setting up your bass tone, especially in a live setting? Well, the one answer that I now give over everything is this. Start with all your tone controls flat and then make very small adjustments based on the room or stage. Try to avoid boosting anything and in basic home practice, just leave them alone. The biggest mistake that bass players make when they're starting out gigging is to set up a tone at a lower volume level, boost the bass, you know, cut the mids before increasing the volume to the band level. This is going to give you a fairly warm sound that, you know, usually sounds quite nice to the ear when playing away from the band. And it's usually a very forgiving sound. You get a nice feel through the floor and it sounds like what you might think of as a stereotypical bass guitar. But that's generally going to be a bad idea. The first thing that you need to realize is that what sounds great away from the band is not necessarily going to work when the band starts playing. Bass guitar in a mix is a totally different animal to bass out of a mix soloed. Every instrument in a band will occupy a certain frequency range and just boosting the bass control is not going to cut through. That's why some of the isolated bass tracks that you hear on YouTube have a tone that doesn't necessarily sound clean and pleasant. Sound engineers are going to mix the bass according to the band as a whole. This is a change of perspective that you will often need to address when getting started in a band. Set your tone to the band mix, don't set it soloed. So here's a big tip to start with. Stop trying to sculpt a tone. This applies to soloed bass just as much as in a band. The sound of your bass should work fine with all of those tone controls flat. If it doesn't, then you might have to think about a change of bass. If every time that you play, you're needing to mess around with tone controls to get the tone that you want, then that might not be the right bass for you. Every bass that I own has a different natural tone when set flat. If I want a precision bass tone, I'll use a precision. I'm not going to spend hours trying to change a music man or an Ibanez bass tone to match the P bass tone that I'm wanting. Now, if you're a total beginner, you might not know what tone that you're looking for. It's just a case of, you know, I bought this cheap beginner bass, I'm in a band, I can't afford to be buying another bass just on the off chance that it might then be the right tone. You know, I'm stuck with it. Experience is going to count for a lot here. But even as a beginner, there are still a bunch of tone tips that you can follow to help you out. Another thing that you'll need to look at before, you know, getting into tone controls is the amp itself. Now, I would not recommend buying any of those tiny 10 watt practice amps. You're never going to get a round bass tone out of those. As a practice amp, you want to have at least a 10 inch speaker and at least 40 watts of power. The Fender Rumble 40 is my favorite amp for home practice. It's not too big, it's ridiculously light, and you can get a nice round tone with everything set flat. When it comes to band rehearsals and gigs, you're going to need something appropriate for the volume of the band. For a light cocktail set, you could probably get by with that Rumble 40, but for any louder pop or rock bands, you're going to be wanting more power. I like to go for as much power and headroom as I can get within reason, but most people will probably be fine with about 200 to 500 watts. Most amps are going to be fine at that power regardless of the brand. Now, the reason that I'm focusing on power here rather than tone is because, like I said, we're going to want to keep the tone controls as flat as possible. With those tiny practice amps, you've got to start messing with the tone controls just to make them sound like okay. But once you get larger speakers and more power, you don't have to do any of that. You can keep those tone controls flat and then just boost the volume until you reach the appropriate volume for the band. If you can't do that with the amp, then you ha you're going to need more power. Don't boost tone controls to make up for a lack of power. It's gonna fart out and distort. Next, you need to address your technique. The way that you play the bass is going to have a huge effect on the tone. 
If your general technique needs work, you know, if your note control is bad, you're not holding the notes correctly, or you're suffering from any of the things that we all find problematic at the start, then your tone is going to suffer. And more importantly, you won't be getting the best tone that you can from that particular instrument. Bad technique is going to sound bad even on the right instrument. You also want the bass to have a good setup. If the frets are uneven in places, the truss rod is set badly, the action's too high or low, the nuts all messed up, or the pickups are just too high, then you're going to be banging your head against a brick wall. All of these things should be set up before going anywhere near those tone controls. You need to think of your bass tone from the ground up. It's also really important to note that you can adjust the tone of your bass with your fingers way more than you can with tone controls. EQ is going to simply boost certain frequencies of the natural sound of the bass guitar, but your fingers and hand placement can actually change the timbre of the bass. So, as an example, here's a really simple bass line, and I'm going to vary the tone using only my hands. So let's start with the hand placed roughly halfway between the bridge and the neck here, so I'm over the neck pickup, and here's a very simple bass line. Now I'm going to move back here to the bridge, so I'm going to play um, the same bass line over that bridge pickup. Notice how it's a lot more mid-heavy, uh, a lot tighter sound, less of the uh, round kind of uh, rumbly bass kind of tone, so here it's a lot warmer. And back here. Lot more tight, lot more defined. So neither of these are better than the other. It's not good or bad, it's just very different. Move it even closer to the neck. Even over the neck. Okay, so the tone is going to change a lot depending on whether you're near the bridge or near the neck and there's limitless possibilities in between and then you can also base a lot of this on the angle of the uh, of the picking hand so if i'm just uh, picking with the fingers pointed at the base so coming straight in a lot more round if i have the fingers a lot flatter yeah, it's going to have a lot more of that clank so the angle of the fingers coming in at the base, the position along the string, all of those things are going to make a big difference. Now on the face of it, that all might seem quite subtle, but this is actually the best tip that I can ever give for developing tone. You might not hear the sound difference too much over some phone speakers or maybe just, you know, because it's soloed, but trust me, next time you play in a band, set all the tone controls flat and just try moving the hand to different places. Try different angles of attacking the fingers and try varying up between hard and soft attack. Adjust the volume if you need to, but keep the tone controls flat and you'll be amazed at the difference in the sounds that you can create as you move around. Just playing the same bass line, just move that hand around, it'll make a complete world of difference. And this brings me finally to the tone controls themselves. Yes, you want to start out flat, you should be able to get a tone that you like with the right bass and right technique for the song, but what if you still need to cut through? Well, this is where mids are the most important frequencies. Mids are your friend. Here's something that you might not realize. Tone controls are just volume controls. Tone controls or faders on an EQ boost the volume of specific frequencies. A volume control, you know, an overall volume control just boosts all of the frequencies equally. This is why when you turn up that bass tone control, you know, on a low volume because you like the, you know, feel of it, it always farts out and distorts when you turn up the overall volume. You're turning up something that's already been turned up. At a low volume, it might be fine, but turn that volume control up and the higher volume of the lower frequencies is going to overload the amp or speaker in just the same way that it would if you turned up the overall uh, volume control really, really high. When you keep the tone controls flat and turn up the overall volume, the bass is going to be increasing anyway. 
It's just all moving up together. So it's just alongside the other frequencies. So you'll still get that warm feeling in the floor without the distortion and you'll still retain the other areas of the sound that are key to the overall tone. What we call mid frequencies is not really set in stone, but we're really looking at a wide band of frequencies between around, let's say 200 hertz and one kilohertz. Different frequencies in there provide different colors to the tone. The main thing to realize though is that mids make up the bulk of your bass tone. Without mids, you don't really have a bass guitar tone. The bass frequencies below 100 hertz might shake the room, given the correct size of room and a speaker uh, that can handle it, but you don't really hear them. And as much as beginner bass players might think that they only want to, you know, feel the bass, they don't really. So as an example, here I'm going to play an open A string. So we're not even looking at the lowest note on the bass, and what I'm going to do is demonstrate that most of what you're hearing there as the main note is actually the first harmonic, an octave higher, which would be that. So here's the note, that open A string, which is a fundamental of 55 hertz. Now let's notch out most everything above 55 hertz so you're hearing only that fundamental. Now I'm guessing that most of you watching this on a phone will barely hear anything there at all. And even if you're wearing headphones or you've got decent speakers, it's gonna just be a low rumble. So next let's just isolate the first harmonic of that A at 110 hertz. So I'm gonna play the... Same thing, same open string, but we're going to narrow it down to that first harmonic at 110 hertz. Notice how that's a lot more audible. So again, open string fundamental. And now the harmonic. Next, let's just listen to the mids in there. So this is gonna be everything between around 200 and 1000 hertz, okay? So. That's what we refer to as the mids. And that is gonna be the bulk of the sound. If you think back to what we had with the, you know, 55 hertz area, it's all very, very low rumble. Even at the 110 hertz, it's, you know, it's fairly low, but all of that stuff between 200 and 1000, that is the bulk of that tone. Next, let's listen to everything above 1000 hertz. This is going to be the highs. This is going to be the treble area. So let's have a listen to that. So again, notice how there's not that much there. You know, it's just the little glistening kind of sounds and the clank up there. So below, let's say 100 or down at that 55 hertz, it's all the rumble. We've got all of that stuff down there. Up at the top, we've got those glassy highs, but everything else, the main bulk of the tone is there in the mids. Now, obviously, all of these areas of the tone combine as a whole, and that's why I say you're best sticking with flat EQ for as long as you can. But it's also obvious here that if you want to hear yourself, the worst thing that you can do is just boost that bass, you know, down at the 55 hertz level, you know, that kind of range, and then just drop those mids. You're going to lose the bulk of your sound and you're gonna get lost in the mix. So here's my tone setup advice. Set your tone controls flat on the bass and the amp. Then when you start playing with the band, raise the volume to the appropriate level. If you still can't hear yourself, you're going to need a bigger amp, you know, a more powerful amp. Raise that volume and as you do this, you'll feel that bass more and more, but you'll also retain all of the character of the bass in there too. It won't be just farting low end. Then if you still feel like you need to cut through a little more, boost your low mids very slightly somewhere in the 200 to 500 hertz range and you'll start to cut through the mix like a knife through butter. You might even have to drop the overall volume of the amp to compensate because it might start to be a little too imposing. If you're not playing live and just practicing, again, keep those tone controls as flat as possible. Work on your playing to create the tone that you desire. Even when it comes to slap bass, I have my tone controls set totally flat. I use new strings to get enough zing, but even if the strings are dead, it's okay. That slap sound, that all comes from technique, not from gear. 
Okay, so remember to subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell to be reminded of the lessons that I release every week. Also, leave me a comment and tell me what other areas of tone that you'd like me to cover. Then check out the Talking Bass website for over 500 free bass lessons in the lesson map and subscribe to the free membership to gain access to a ton of free practice resources like the Scale Reference Manual eBook, the 25 Bass Riff Challenge, the drum tracks, the forums, the chat groups, the courses, and much, much more. Hit the link below and I'll see you next week.